Sarah. And yeah, I know. I've missed a couple of videos, a couple of weeks, or maybe it's just one week. I think it might be two, but it might have just been one. And I am so, so incredibly sorry about that, but I have been really, really busy with my new course. I did warn that this might happen. So I'm gonna try and balance my time a bit better, but I haven't even had time to really read actual books. I've read fan fiction and my textbooks, and that's about it. Maybe I should do reviews of fan fiction. Let me know your thoughts on that idea, because I do honestly want to do that for the ones that I think are utterly incredible. But I did read one book before this all happened, and I took notes. And that is The Red Pyramid, the first book in the Kane Chronicles series by Rick Riordan. But I read the graphic novel because I have read the actual novel before. So I thought I'd give the graphic novel a try because I'm determined to find more graphic novels that I actually like. So I took notes in this book because what I decided to do this year is with each book I read, I'm going to put detailed notes down so that I have all my thoughts at the end of the video all together. So this is what it looks like. That's the art style. It's unique to say the least. Now. I may or may not do another book talk for the actual novel, because obviously with graphic novels things get missed out, they get left out, it gets condensed, and you don't get the full story. You get a lot of it, but not the full story. So yeah, I may go back, we'll see. Anyway, so I read this from the 15th to the 16th of January. That's that's over a month ago. And yeah, I don't know the total number of pages because for some random reason that I do not know, there are no page numbers in that. Okay, so here are my thoughts. Art style took a while to get used to, like I'd give it an 80% quality, like it's not the worst one I've ever come across that that award will forever go to the Percy Jackson ones. The original ones, I can't judge the new ones yet, I haven't bought a copy, but the first graphic novels they attempted were awful, utterly terrible. Ugh. And the best graphic novels I've ever seen are the ones for Alex Ryder, those ones, A+, plus. A+. Plus. Um, and yeah, so it took a while to get used to Bass Eyes? took quite a while because okay so for those of you who don't know what the Kane Chronicles are okay obviously this is gonna have spoilers I will put that in the title of the video so that you're aware of this going in but the Kane Chronicles is all about the um Egyptian gods so if you're familiar with Rick Riordan's work in Percy Jackson's he's got the Greek gods in the Heroes of Olympus series you've got Greek gods again and their Roman aspects. In the Magnus Chase ones you got the Viking gods or Norse mythology to be more accurately to be more accurate um, and in this one you got the Egyptian gods. Now it's different in the sense that they're not demigods, the kids, the Canes, Sadie and Carter Cain. They're siblings and it's wonderful. Um, they are not demigods. They are magicians with the blood of the pharaohs. The way the Egyptian gods work is they favour the pharaohs. They like them. And so often they will inhabit their body and work through them, sometimes controlling them. And that's why so many of the Greek myths, not Greek, <laughs> Egyptian myths get so confused is because they possess different people so sometimes it was a mother and son or a wife and husband so things got icky if you think about it too long um anyway it is such a good story i love the cane sadie cane in many ways is my spirit animal which is first series i read where like 
old thing I came across where people dyed their hair who had blonde hair like me. And I was just like, I want to do that. Can I do that, please? Yeah. And so as I was reading this graphic novel, all my memories came rushing back to me. So I remembered things either as I was reading them or just before they came up in the story. So the characters you've got in this story, you've got Sadie and Carter, who, like I said, are siblings. You've got their parents, their mother died years ago, and they don't know why. Sadie was sent to live with her grandparents, and Carter lived with his father. Now, they had very different upbringings, because Sadie was brought up in London, she stayed in the same place, she barely saw her brother or father, and Carter went everywhere, all around the world, to all these different dig sites, he never stayed in a permanent place. And they have been jealous of one another for a very long time. Sadie, because Carter gets to spend all this time with Dad, and she never does. And Carter, because Sadie has a home. She is somewhere she knows she can go to. And she went to regular school and had friends. Whereas with Carter, his dad just tried to make him into a mini version of himself. I'm sure be thankful that failed. Um... So they're not the closest of siblings, and you really question their father's choices. I can't remember his name. I can't remember the name, because they just referred to him as Dad, so... Maybe it's in the beginning of this? It's just Dr. Kane. Julius, there we go. That's the dad's name. Question his parenting style a lot in this. And then you have their uncle Amos, who has been forbidden to see his brother. Because throughout all of this, we don't know why they were split up. Why their mother died. It's a huge mystery. And at the end of the story, you find out it's because they were summoning gods. Because their mother had the gift of foresight, and she foresaw in an upcoming battle they would need the gods on their side. They would need to free them from the duat. I think that's where they were. Um, and in doing so, she died. But Bast was set free. Along with, and she died making sure something else didn't come out, and that something else is Apophis, the snake of chaos. It's very nasty individual and in Egyptian mythology true evil so Set is the god of chaos but Apophis, Ap Apophis I'm gonna butcher that forever is evil itself like true true evil um anyway so yeah the mothers and so the grandparents have never forgiven the father because they thought it was his fault when it was really both their fault and you learn that with the Egyptian people, so the other magicians, they have this organisation called the House of Life, where they take on magicians and train them, and they put down the law, and they had decreed that gods should not be messed with because it caused all sorts of trouble in ancient Egypt. And the dude in charge comes from that time and was just like, we can't mess with that. So you're like, okay. And so because of this, he forbade the Canes from ever interacting with one another. So Amos couldn't see his brother, and Carter and Julius only got to see Sadie occasionally. Because it turns out that Carter and Sadie are like extra powerful. They unite two ancient bloodlines of the pharaohs, some of the purest and most powerful bloodlines. They unite it together. And the House of Life was just like, okay, we cannot have two powerful magicians growing up together. That is a recipe for disaster. And you're just like, really? And not telling them about their powers is even less of one? Makes no sense. Because yes, as the story goes on, they unravel their powers. Okay, so one of the things I remembered was that Amos was possessed by Set. I remembered that pretty early on when the gods were released. I was like, oh yeah, he got possessed by Set. So when Amos did his, Amos came back, I was like, yeah. And I remembered the sad thing, it made me really upset, especially when I read the second book. 
Zia, who is another person we meet, she's a magician and she's lived at the House of Life. Her family was killed by something, I can't remember what, but it was horrible. And she's been raised in the House of Life and she kind of develops a massive crush on her and she seems to reciprocate. But at the end of the story, we find out she was a Shabbati. A Shabbati. That is this little dough thing. Basically, it wasn't her. And she is possessed by Nephesis, which is the wife of Set and also his sister. You know God's sick, it's icky. They, they, fathered, they had Anubis. So, she is was hidden away by the House of Life's leader because he knew that his second-in-command would want to kill anyone possessed by the gods. So, and he loved Zia like he was his own daughter. So he hid her away and put a Shabbat in her place. Then I remembered Sadie's crush on Anubis. That came rushing back. And also her second crush, but I won't mention that because that's book two stuff. And I was just like, oh yeah, yeah. And Anubis, that boy, does not know how to handle teenage girls. I don't think he's been around them very much. Or at least none like Sadie, and it's fabulous. And the Feather of Truth scene was just like, <sighs> yes. And yeah, Arises possessed the dad, which means their dad is technically dead because Arises is the god of the underworld, or king of the underworld, or whatever. And towards the end, they get to see their parents again and reunite with both of them because. Since he's now in the underworld, he gets to bring them on to, you know, be by his side as a ghost. And then Bast is badass. But I remembered stuff from book two which coloured it because my favourite god in the Egyptians is Bess. They won't go into that because it's book two spoilers, but just trust me, he's fabulous. And Bast does not treat him well. And there's another god I really like in that one. It's I can't remember her name. Tuhari? It's the hippo god, and she is... We stand a queen. Last isn't bad, and she clearly cares about Sadie and Carter, especially Sadie. And she was her cat for the past five or however many years it's been. Muffin. And that's why Muffin never became older than a kitten. Well, that's a thing. Yeah, and Amos left, so there's no adults. It's just them. The monkey, which is a baboon, called Khufu, and I have a thing about baboons, but I'll admit Khufu's awesome, but I'm just like, dude, if we met in person, it would take me a while to get used to it, because if you grew up in Africa like I did, never trust a baboon. They're worse than lions. <sighs> and then, at the end of the book, I I remembered, and it was so awesome, because you got the leader... The House of Life, because the kindly old dude finally passed away. It's been like a thousand years and he finally passed away. And you're like, well, you deserve your rest. But now you've left this idiot in charge. Turns up to go and kill Carter and Sadie. And they're like, nope, you can't do that. I'm like, why not? Because we give up the power of the gods. And they release themselves from the possession. Because they're like, hey, we don't like having you hanging around in our heads. And telling us what to do. I mean, all the power's awesome. But we don't agree with your natural instincts, so bye-bye. Uh, bye-bye. Because Kana has Horus, and he seems all right, a bit bloodthirsty and gung-ho and very set on revenge against Set, which is kind of fair enough, since Set did kill his dad. Um, or Isis. And then Isis... Ugh, I cannot stand that woman. She killed Ra. Ugh, idiotic woman. And she really wanted Arises to become king and went about in the worst way possible and it just... Blech. And we also realised Set was a puppet. It was a Ophosis who was behind the whole thing. Set was just being guided into doing it. Which is fun. Because at the end of the pyramid, it's like, we were calling you to help us take him down. Because we're guessing you didn't like that either. And then this sibling bonding and their sibling relationship is awesome because it slowly gets stronger and stronger throughout the books, from what I remember. And something I love 
Yeah, Sadie and Carter don't look alike, because Carter takes after his dad and is rather dark skin, and Sadie, well, she looks like me, without glasses. She's white, blonde-haired, so they don't look like siblings, and they admit this, but they will get very offended if anyone calls them out on it, because, like, we can comment on that. But now that no one else is, we are siblings. We are brother and sister. This is my brother. Only I'm allowed to mess with him. That sort of thing. <sighs> yeah. Hate Isis, idiotic woman could give Zeus a run for his money. And then Thoth, I love him. Okay, he's not my favourite. He's probably my third favourite god overall. But he's the god of, like, knowledge and using your brains. And unlike Athena, he's actually really good at it. And reasonable and awesome. And all the references to Olympus that like it's funny because they his Amos takes them to the House of Life twelve. I don't know, there's they've got different houses of life all over the place. And it's in Brooklyn, not Manhattan, because Amos is like, there's powers in Manhattan that we don't want to mess with, so we stay in Brooklyn and we just like, yes, you're referencing Olympus. And then Yep, Sadie is fabulous, Carter is brilliant. Ah, uh, Iskander, that's the old guy I said. He was really nice, he was like Dumbledore. Only less cryptic. A lot less cryptic. Des Jardins is his second in command and useless and annoying. Gotta love Khufu and Philip the Macedonian crocodile. He's he's an albino crocodile to me and there's really paused, it's casual. So yes, we have an albino crocodile. Why don't you? <laughs> Nutting Geb, honestly, is so sad because they just wanted to have kids, but Ra heard a prophecy that the kids were gonna overthrow him, sound familiar, and then forbade them from ever contacting each other once again. So Nut is in the sky as the sky goddess, and Geb is in the ground, and they're always depicted as Reaching out for one another, but never to touch. Because they did have kids. Because Nut gambled with the moon god. The moon god. Because, what's his name? Um, Ra forbade her for having children in any of the days of the year. But she managed to put on five, four? One of the two extra days to have her kids. And you're a bit like, okay, cool. And then they were forbidden from ever talking to each other. And I'm just like, but they really seem to love each other. And for, for gods, they're making the long distance relationship work, which is not what you can say for most gods. The magic system in this series is so fascinating because you use the hieroglyphs, which Sadie has a natural affinity for. She just naturally understands them, which is just... <laughs> but... It's to do with your intent. So you could say, I don't know, wadjet or something, and it would do nothing because you've got to have the focus and the intent behind it of what you want it to do. And yes, it draws upon your energy and it just does. Just... Love all the Egyptian info, the set animal. <laughs> okay, so set has like a god thing called the set animal because no one knows what it is. And it doesn't have the name. So Carter's just like, I'm going to call you Leroy. You are now Leroy. This <laughs> kid is brilliant. Leroy, you can never take him seriously again. No offense to all the Leroys out there, but just... <laughs> you gotta love it. It's like how oh, Fluffy and Harry Potter. You can't take him seriously. Maybe a three-headed Cypress, but it's called Fluffy. Fluffy. Ran and Gramps are stupid. Yep. Doughboy. <laughs> so you remember I mentioned the Shabbati earlier on. They've got a Shabbati that lives in the magic kit that they got from their dad called Doughboy. And he is hilarious and he's constantly trying to free himself. And at one point, Carter kind of cuts off his legs and he's like, Stop trying to run away and answer the damn question. Because he's supposed to answer all their questions. It's really quite funny. Amos needs to explain more. Well, that's the usual thing in this one. Julius loves his kids, but needs to explain himself full stop because they don't know nothing about what he's done. 
except what they hear from other people until the very end of the book, and even then I don't think they've got the full story. Anubis, I said before, is adorable. God's stupid with plans in general, which, when does that ever change? Like, gods are always stupid, and that's because they're not the one true god. And I can say this because this is a universe that has Norse, Greek slash Roman, and Egyptian ones all running around in the same place. So, clearly none of them are the original creator of the universe. So, that's all the notes I took. If you have not read the Cain Chronicles, read them. I just gave a very random book talk about it. Very random. That wasn't in any sort of order, but it is so good. And I have to say, the graphic novel... Once you get used to it, some of the expressions that the artist chooses to make are a bit meh. But once you get used to it, it's not that bad. It's pretty good. And I'm looking forward to see how they depict Bess. Though, to be honest, there is an artist on Tumblr who is now doing the official art on his website. Who, honestly, they should just hire to do all of the graphic novels. Because I'm like... Her art is brilliant, it's amazing, it is wonderful, and I can't for the life of me remember the name of her right now. I think I said her, it could be a he, it's Tumblr, I never know. I'd say put it very clearly in the description and I'm pretty sure they didn't. Anyway, but you can find them by going to Rick Riordan's official website and you'll see. Bel Valeria? Valaya? It begins with a V. Mm. here my special book which I have yet to do a video on um okay the writing's all way too small but <laughs> you probably couldn't see that at all but that is a little bit of what the artistry looks like and she is fabulous and wonderful and yeah Oh, and for those of you who are like me and hate love triangles, I will say this. There is one, starting in book two, but it has the most interesting end to a love triangle I've ever seen in fiction. It's not bad. It's just very different. Anyway, so I'm going to end this video here. Again, I am so sorry for not uploading sooner. You may get another video immediately after this one to make up for it. I haven't decided yet. I think this angle works better. Please ignore this white bar at top. That's my bookshelf. I've had to balance you on top of my Harry Potter books to get a good angle. This is much better than the other angles we've done. Um, again, I will get a real camera. But first, I actually need money. I am beyond broke at the moment. <sighs> this is what moving does. It's a ball you say. All of them. And I need to buy another bookcase and I need to do... My room is a mess. You can probably see. At least some of it is a complete state. Because I can't put anything away. Because I've only got a cupboard and a chest of drawers and I've already filled the bookcases. And those are both full as well. And I've still got more stuff. I have a lot of stuff. So, wish me luck on that one. <laughs> I haven't even unpacked my Lego. This is a gigantic travesty. I love my Lego. <laughs> but I can't because I don't have anywhere to put anything. <sighs> I'm living in chaos. And this is not my organized chaos that I usually thrive upon. This is just chaos. <sighs> Alright. I believe I talked about everything. So... If you like this video, give it a like, or comment, or maybe even subscribe if you want to. My previous video will be here, hopefully it may be here. I'm going for here. That's nice and empty. And yeah, I really hope you enjoyed. Bye!